Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. We uh, just finished two other vehicles today. We have two more to do. I'm at Latour's Auto and I'm sitting here thinking, how do I want to do this video? Um, I had a request from one of you guys recently that wanted me to just film. In other words, like not necessarily teach like I do. You guys that are new to this channel, maybe you don't know that I, I teach as I'm troubleshooting. And I, I'm wrestling with this idea because <clears throat> I want to try this. I don't know if it'll work and I don't know if my default is going to go back to teaching. In other words, I want to just troubleshoot this truck and be done with it and show you guys how to make money, right? When I, in the, in the height of my mobile repair business before I started filming video and it changed everything, um, I would charge per car. And so I would charge $70 per car um, and that's what we're about to do right here is show you how to make a quick 70 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever your fee is to uh, when you go to a garage, that's what I, I would work for is garages and I'd tell them what to fix and we'd be done. So uh, I'm thinking along those lines, can I just do that and not teach? Tell you what's wrong with this truck? I'm telling you just by the symptom alone of bringing it over here, it has a fuel problem. What was the symptom? Symptoms are, well, I'll let you hear it. it listen to it. it. Starts up okay. I do have a check engine light on. Didn't scan it yet. Listen to it when I step into the throttle. When you hear popping through the intake, I want you to get a shot of my foot on the gas pedal so you can see the delay in the way this thing revs. Ready? Now watch again. <laughs> so, so we, we have one of two problems. I know this system, uh, we have a mass airflow sensor problem or we have low fuel pressure. My money's on low fuel pressure. I probably should scan it to get fault codes out of this because um, I was gonna disconnect the mass airflow and uh, see if I can put it in a default mode to see if it runs better. Well, let's do that. The only reason I thought let's not do that, it, I haven't scanned it yet. So, I, all right, GM has good backup strategies for MAFs. So when I unplug the MAF, that puts the car in a default mode, and if the MAF was the issue, this thing's gonna run fine. Same problem. So it's not the mass airflow. That's right, it's not the mass airflow sensor. Now the only downside of starting there is I set a fault code and um, I didn't yeah. even read the codes yet. I just, I, I have to know that any mass airflow code that is in memory here is, um, is gonna be set by me. So fuel pressure's next. Fortunately on these systems, they provide a service port and so I'm gonna connect a pressure gauge. You guys that are following what I'm doing want tools. I have some tools listed on my Amazon affiliate page and on my website, scannerdanner.com. The reason I mentioned that, the kit I'm using, it's like a $400 fuel pressure kit. But I found a kit made by OTC that will do GM and Ford and Chrysler with the service ports, and it's like 30 bucks. So for you guys that want to measure fuel pressure and you don't have a gauge, make sure you go on my Amazon page it's my Scanner Danner Amazon page. You'll find the link in the description of this video and you guys can pick up a cheap set that will allow you to do the service port type fittings on GM, Ford, and Chrysler. You do not need a $400 fuel pressure kit like I'm using. My kit has adapters for all different cars. Want to be safe with fuel, be careful with what you're doing, know that ignition sources under the hood when you have 
fuel pressure gauge connected, those two don't mix, so be careful. Starting it up. You have fuel pressure. Yeah, I see a lawn that's taking to come up. Yeah. Knowing your system is important. This is a 55 to 65 PSI system. When I snap the throttle on this, we should have pressure go up to 60, 61 PSI right away. So I'm gonna do that from over here. You can focus on the gauge. Snapping the throttle here. Try that again. I'm at wide open throttle. Pump's weak. Just needs a fuel pump. If this pump was not weak, I would be able to hold it at wide open, get my pressure gauge to 61, 62 PSI, and it would stay there the whole time. The reason you saw the pressure dropping, I'm, my pump is right on the verge of really not being able to run this vehicle. This is a system that if your fuel pressure drops below 50 PSI, this thing's not even gonna run. And so uh, this is a fuel pump problem, no question about it, no question about it. So honestly, the last part of this would be to be 100% and to charge your 70 bucks is to check your power and ground to the pump and make sure you're good before you tell the garage to put a fuel pump in it. This is a fuel pump issue, no question about it. We can do a quick deadhead test. Um, let's pinch the return line and watch our pressure max. I think we're really hitting our max already. That's wide open throttle. Watch my hand in this pressure gauge at the same time. As soon as I snap that, that should immediately go to 61. Immediate. See how it's like delayed and coming up? And the only reason it's rising is it can be misleading for some of you guys, but the reason it's rising is this is a vacuum type assist regulator where lack of vacuum pressure rises so it changes the fuel pressure regulator and when I snap it to wide open we're losing vacuum and see here I am teaching again Caleb I'm done shut the hood put a pump in this thing I, that's where we are change the pump change the fuel filter if you feel the need to go crawl underneath check your power and ground that can be done up here at the relay this is gonna take us a little bit longer to show this part, but this really isn't necessary. Not from what I'm seeing. This is my fuel pump relay right here. Those terminals are super loose too. Okay, now they're all right. All right, so that's my pump. Let's get a quick amperage measurement. A little warning here to you guys. I'm gonna use a jumper wire this time. A lot of you guys have seen me use a tool, which is really what I wanna use, but I'm showing alternate methods here. I'm using a jumper wire for this one. The tool I have makes this testing really nice. It's called a U-Activate tool. I'll put some links in the description of this video for other videos I've done showing this tool. But what I wanna do is just jump the load side of this relay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna um, jump pins 30 and 87 and know that they're backwards so it would be top right and bottom left 30 and 87 if i jump the wrong pins i'm gonna smoke the engine computer so don't do this wrong pins 30 pin 30 is this guy pin 87 let's make sure i was triple check myself here you know what i'm gonna shut the key off too just in case I have the computer active, so 30, 87, quadruple checking myself. This should run the pump. Some pressure gauge. I can hear my pump, it's running, 
um, at 62 PSI, which is what we should have had at wide open throttle. The reason we didn't is the injectors were firing and so we had pressure losses. Right now, there are no pressure losses. So this weak pump has no problem keeping up without the injectors firing. So right now the fuel's coming up to the rail, running back to the tank, just doing a real fast amperage measurement here, people. All right, setting this to a 20 amp. Have my jumper wire installed, just going right around the jumper wire. And my pattern went upside down, so you don't need, you can kind of be on me probably now. Yeah, uh, let's invert this. We're running about nine amps of current flow on this fuel pump, so the pump is fine as far as the power and ground goes. If you had a power or ground circuit problem, you wouldn't be reading that kind of amperage. So it's just the, the delivery of the pump? The delivery of the pump. In fact, we can go a little further with this. We don't need to, I mean, the rest of this guys now is we're teaching, okay? Um, my power and ground are good to the pump. My pump, my fuel pressure is weak. This needs a fuel pump. Fuel pump, fuel filter, uh, done, okay? 70 bucks, 100 bucks in your pocket. The rest of this, we're teaching, okay? Uh, and I'll, I'll get you codes too on this. I'll bet you we have lean exhaust fault codes would be my would be my guess. P0171 and 174 will be our fault codes in memory based on what I'm seeing here. And a mass airflow code because we set that. But what we can do as far as this pump goes is we can actually calculate uh, some RPM. This is like a really, really crappy looking waveform on this pump. Let's go. 10 milliseconds, we'll freeze this, zoom out, and um, it, it's almost like this thing is running, it's just a very, very odd looking pattern. It's almost like half the pump is dead. Um, but what you would do, if this, if this is legit, if these numbers are legit, it should be an eight bar pump. And uh, each one of these humps would represent one of the commutator segments. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then back to one. So from cursor to cursor, we are talking about a time frame of uh, a, t a delta time of 20 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds that it's taking for the pump to run one full rotation. Uh, without breaking out the calculator, I know that eight rotations occurring in, or eight humps occurring in 10 milliseconds is equal to 6,000 RPM. So one rotation in 10 milliseconds, yeah, 60,000 milliseconds in a minute, for one rotation to occur in 10 milliseconds, that puts you at 6,000 RPM. Some of you guys are following me on the math. Caleb, how am I doing? That makes sense? Sounds about right. Now. Okay. So if one rotation is occurring every 10 milliseconds, you go 60,000 divided by 10 is 6,000, 6,000 RPM. 6,000 revolutions per minute is what that means, okay? So if, if I have one rotation occurring in 20 milliseconds, where does that put my RPM? It's in half. We're our, our pump RPM is 3,000 RPM on this. So it's half the speed it should be on this vehicle. Four to 6,000 RPM is average. This is not a number you can use across the board, but I know this system and I know this pump and this pump should be running about 6,000 RPM. It's running at 3,000 RPM. So we have some issues with this pump. Uh, one is pressure delivery and two is our RPM is low. Amperage is good, powers and grounds are good. This thing, uh, one last piece is gonna be, let's scan it and confirm our lean exhaust codes. And, and for you guys, this is just for you. I, I'm done. I've been done. In fact, I, I knew this needed a pump just, just after disconnecting that mass airflow sensor. And just by the way this thing revved up, yeah. I knew we were talking fuel pressure. Now, we're, we may actually have a fuel pump circuit code now, too, because I had the relay out. So we want to bet, Caleb, on the codes? I mean, if you're confident. <laughs> I'd put... Uh, I'd put uh, I've seen variables, but I'd put a hundred bucks on P0171 and 174 fault codes being in memory. I'm not saying there aren't other codes, but I'll bet you they're there. I'm not taking that back because I don't want to lose a hundred. Oh, I have, uh, I, I would have lost the bet, but 
I could have argued a technicality here. I have a mass airflow code, right? We unplug that. Yeah. The two codes I have is O2 sensor low, bank one, sensor one. O2 sensor low, bank two, sensor one. So what that means, both upstream O2 sensors are lean, low voltage, which would be your P0171 and 174 fault codes, which are fuel trim being elevated to counter for a lean condition. I just kind of, I would argue technicality. I would argue foul. I want my hundred bucks. These are lean exhaust fault codes is what that means. This just confirms where we are with this vehicle. We have a fuel pressure issue. Um, these are really, really sensitive to fuel pressure. As you could see by the gauge, you'd think it wouldn't act that way with that kind of pressure. These systems will. Wide open throttle on these systems, you better be over 60 PSI, okay? Remember that. Cranking, you better be over 60 PSI on this system as well. What's similar between cranking and wide open throttle is no engine vacuum. Engine vacuum, you start it, affects the regulator, pulls your pressure low, lower than you would be at wide open throttle or cranking. So it's normal to see that drop. That's what you guys were looking at. If you want more information on fuel systems, and I went too fast here, chapter 15, chapter, sorry, chapter 14, 15, and 16 in my textbook, available on my website, also Scanner Danner Premium. I can invite you into my classroom where I'm teaching you about these systems. There's a monthly subscription on that. It is, again, on my website. You will find links to that here in this video, as well as the end screen cards and the little eye icons. Pay attention to that as you guys are following me. Nice, easy money in our pockets here, guys. Right? That's what I'm seeing from you guys across the globe now, is I'm seeing people changing their income status, their, their amount of ability to make money even on the side from following me. Thank you guys so much. This one needs a pump. We'll see you next time. So inevitably, as we turn the camera off, Caleb, my son here, asks me some great questions and we were kind of doing a real fast video and we didn't do all the other checks we normally do. And I told him we actually did. One of the questions he had was, well, why didn't we go in the back and check power and ground? And some of you caught it, Caleb didn't, and some of you didn't too. And that is, I had nine amps of current flow up here. So this pump normally runs between eight and 10 amps of current. I know this system. So what does nine amps tell us? Nine amps yeah. tell us can't be a power or ground problem. Because if I had a power or ground problem, my amperage would be low. I didn't have low amperage. So there's other methods we can use to identify that. It's not my job in this video to teach you all methods. I just want to be clear on this. We did not check power and ground in the back because our amperage was fine up front. Simple as that. Make sense? Good. Any other questions before we turn the camera off? I'm good. Smart kid. All right, guys. See you next time.